Um, I just thought uh, a lot of you would appreciate it if I did a demonstration on a, a basic rendering technique or approach, really. Um, it's less of a technique and more of an approach when I'm going to be demonstrating. Uh, this isn't how I tackle images anymore, but this is how I used to do it. So if you've taken my online video course, you'll notice that this is going to be a different approach. Um, what, what I do now I feel is a little bit more um, uh, streamlined, but still this is a great, you know, if you're just starting uh, learning how to color, this is a great way to start. So, uh, anyways, I have this uh, nice little Superman piece by Jamal Eigel uh, that I'm going to be demonstrating on. Um, first over here, you look in the layer palettes, you know, I've already done my flats, and uh, if you've seen my previous videos on flatting, uh, this is, you know, how I set it up. So, I had done in local colors, or, you know, the actual colors of the object, then I had this color group where I've unified the colors for the base tones. Basically, I just put this kind of like orangish brown over the figure of Superman. And then I've copied the local colors to another layer here, um, just so I still have that. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to select this color group, hold down Shift and select the background, and hit Command E to merge the two. Then I am going to drag this down here to copy the layer. I'm going to call this one colors. I'm going to put local colors underneath it. So now here is where all of the rendering is going to um, be. Uh, next, first I'm going to do the background here. So I'm going to take um, the wand tool and select the background. And now and this is going in the nutshell. This is the approach, the rendering approach here. I'm going to hit Command J, and then that copies that selection to a new layer. And then I am going to uh, well just lock that layer. So now, whatever I do, say I take the brush tool, and let's turn that onto linear DAW. So just paint on this layer. See, it only affects this selection now because this layer is locked. Go back. Um, so now I can put some tones to the sky here. Zoom out a bit. Gradient. Um, I like to, you can use a lot of different blending modes to apply the color. I use linear dodge. I just like the quality of the, co the color. So uh, basically I'm just going to take the um, color of the sky, take the gradient, and I'm just going to do a gradient across it. Maybe do another one. Yeah, I like that. So now there's kind of a light source coming down this from this direction. Uh, of course, you know, you can get fancier with it and, you know, paint some clouds or something. Uh, but I'm just going to be doing, you know, this basic you know, I'm just doing this just for a basic demonstration, so flat grad is, you know, will work here. And then I, I'm going to merge that back down. Actually, I didn't really need to name that because when I merge it down, it's going to overwrite the name anyway, so. Um, it's been a while since I've done this technique, so I forget things like that. But, all right, so next I'm going to move on to the figure. I'm going to select the blue of his costume. Again, hit Command J. I'm going to actually do the keyboard shortcut, so I'm going to hit the question mark on the keyboard to lock the layer. So you can do that, or you can hit the little thing here where it says lock to toggle that on and off. Um, so now I'll be working on that. Alright, so now I'm just going to go back down to the local color, and I usually start doing my highlights with linear dodge going from the local color. Um, oftentimes that works for me. Sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to do another grad based from the same direction. And I'm going to do that. Now, to me, that blue is actually more washed out than I would like. So I am going to go back in the History Channel and undo that. I'm going to try a brighter blue. All right, that one looks pretty good. I'll undo. Let me try a deeper one. See if I. 
that's about the same again two washed out so here I'm just basically just playing around with which color I think looks the best for the blue I, I think I'm gonna go with that one actually alright so there I just put a grad over it um, now I mean you can do again like I said you could paint whatever you can do whatever rendering technique you want here on this uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and grab the base color here zoom in I'm going to use the lasso tool to grab the shadows all right, so now see I can fill in the shadow here, and also you can go. Let's see, I believe it's edit fill and do a partial fill, like just a forty percent one, and just fill in part of that. Uh, I've also associated this with actions uh, you can check out my video on actions on how to program fills so you can just do it with a click of the keyboard and, oops cancel yeah click of the keyboard instead of um, going down to the menu option every single time so now I'm just basically Yeah, basically just pushing back these highlights and adding shadows. I'm not going to get too fuzzy with the rendering here. I'm just trying to, again, just demonstrate this, you know, this approach. Giving a few steps of the shadows here using this technique. I mean, you can see I'm just really quickly here establishing these, sh these shadows. Um, but you see, since I'm isolated this layer, I can easily freely go and grab these areas. And even with just these really quick, rough, um, basically called these cuts where we're cutting in these shapes, um, 
you know, you really start getting a sense of the form, even though it's pr I'm keeping it pretty rough and simple here. All right. And then, of course, if you wanted to, I go up here, grab this brighter highlight. And you could come in here and add another highlight, fill it in here. Add another level, even over here. All right. So I'm going to move on. Hit Command E to merge that down, and I'm going to do the same thing with the red section. Go hit Command J, question mark to lock it. Uh, let's see, yeah, get this much more saturated red, again, I'm going to throw a gradient with linear and dodge on, in the same direction, alright, now that's going a bit too orange, so I'm going to try a couple different reds here, still too orange, let's try this red, Eh, still not liking that. All right, reds can be difficult. Um, I think I can work with this one though. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go grab the base tone, like before, and I'm just going to put a fill over all of it and push a little bit more into the red. Okay. I think that's looking more red now, a little less orange. Yeah. Again, just going to go in here, quickly establish some shadows. I'm establishing my cuts on the cape a little bit differently to kind of get more of a sense of cloth. I'm just going to kind of give a sense that more of a sense that it's casting a shadow. Just fill that all in. And then I'll create some shadows for the structure of the cape.
actually, since this foot's going back, I'm going to push the whole foot back a little bit further. And then create some shadows here. I'm gonna push that back too since I'm kind of trying to create a little bit of depth there. So on the very edge, I might go ahead and put the red back in there. Push this back a little bit more too. There we go. All right. So Command E to merge that back down. And of course, if I wanted to go back into something I've already rendered, you know, I just close the renders, whatever grab the red again, and then I can just do Command-J, do it, and then I can do more rendering on it if I wished. All right, now I'm just going to do the yellow. Grab that yellow. Command-J, question mark to lock it. Oh. Let's grab the... All right, now that yellow I like. I'll grab the base tone. Here, grab a highlight, put it on top of that little thing. All right, now the yellow's done. So Command E. All right, now I'm going to do the flesh tone. So we'll select that. Um, also, just in case I'm taking this uh, for granted. See the contiguous here? If you check that on, then you can just select just the hand. But click that off, and I select all the flesh tone. So, all right, so again, Command J, question mark to lock it. All right, I'm going to. Select the local color, see how that works. Uh, 
I think that actually might work okay. Set the base tone. You know, when you're um, you know, deciding where to place some of your shadows, you definitely just want to keep in the back of your head like where the light source is coming from. And even if it's not like 100%, because it, it does take a lot of guesswork, um, but even if it's not 100% accurate, you, know, you at least you'll be establishing something that's believable. And of course, if you're having real difficulty figuring out how to do something, you can always try and do like a light study, set it up in real life and try to light it similarly and uh, might give you an idea of what you're missing to make it that more believable. But again, for this, I'm just doing a quick demonstration on just this approach. This more for the technical purposes of how to how you can set up your layers to um uh to do your rendering a little bit of shadow on the edge of the hair not too much. Some shadow underneath the brows. Again, having the light casting a shadow from his nose. Faces actually still bother me. I'm gonna put another shadow. 
try not to be too picky about it, but. Alright. Alright. Let's move on. Command J. For this, I'm going to use a light blue, I think. Forgot to lock the lair, see? There you go. Yeah. Let's grab the tone. Brighter highlight right there. Grab that blue again. There we go. All right. And E. Time to do the white of the teeth and the eyes. Grab that. Go grab the base tone. J. Lock it. Oops, let's zoom in a little bit more. Gradient, Command E. I'm not even going to bother isolating the eyes because I can just do that here. Take out a light blue. that. Now the bird, command J, boom. Uh, got local color, got the base color, do the gradient. So uh, that's a quick demonstration on how to use this approach. And as you can see, with just in this pretty simple technique, um, I've now fully rendered colored image. And of course, um, you can pretty much do any technique. Like I said, you can kind of do a more painterly thing. You could even do something even more simple than this. You know, whatever you want. Um, it's just a, a good approach 
uh, especially when you're starting out, um, to be able to easily um, you know grab the shapes and you know render the image. So, hope you got some use out of that, and I'll see you next time. I hope you found that video useful. Please check out some of our previous videos for more tips and tricks. Also, head over to our website where you'll be able to find our online video courses, blog posts, link to social media, and a lot more. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you next time.